Namaste everybody and welcome to this uh, video. Uh, in this video I'm going to try and introduce uh, some breathing practices in yoga and they are called pranayama and also a meditation at the end uh, on the chakra, chakra meditation. So a little bit about pranayama. Uh, in addition to pranayama being physically beneficial in terms of increasing oxygen supply and you know throwing out impure air from the body more effectively there is a deeper uh, a meaning of pranayama it's a very big subject in itself but i just want to introduce some of the uh, deeper aspects of pranayama so that one really gets you know the deeper meaning of it and also gets the motivation to do more pranayama okay so <clears throat> key to understanding the deeper effects of pranayama is to is to go beyond this physical body of ours which is of course made up of bones ligaments muscles the organs and all the fluids and so on this is called the gross body and there are two more bodies one is called the subtle body and one is called the causal body I don't want to go into the details of causal body but I want to go into the little details of the subtle body the subtle body now this is not my idea okay these are actually written in some of the ancient uh, Sanskrit texts from India and one of them uh, if you want to read is called Tattva Bodha by Adi Shankaracharya a very very famous saint who lived more than 1200 years ago he's like one of the greatest uh, saints of India and uh, I'll be putting references to this uh, these books that I'm mentioning in the description section so you can easily find them in Tattva the Sharira Trayam is mentioned which means three bodies so gross body this body and then the subtle body and then the causal body the subtle body is the one that initiates everything that the physical body does so whether it be a movement like I move my hands like this it came from the subtle body Sub subtle body initiated this movement thoughts also come from the subtle body how does the thought come it just comes from the subtle body why it generated it that's a different question but it is the one that generates everything and the subtle body is a is like a parallel body inside you which handles all the functions in you like your digestion for example or your heartbeat or sweating or the release of chemicals in the body and so on uh, digestion for example you don't you don't do anything to digest your food you just eat your food and then it digests by itself who is doing it the subtle body and the subtle body runs on the intelligence of the five pranas you see that's where the word pranayama comes from from the prana prana is the life force and there are five uh, categories of life force I don't want to go into the details again you can read about it you'll find it's just search for five pranas and you'll find a lot of writings about this uh, prana is the same as chi in Chinese and ki in Japanese if you've heard about Tai Chi and Reiki that's where they come from okay so all the Eastern systems believe in not just believe in they know that the body runs on life force and life force is very important and pranayama enhances the pranic system to increase the supply of prana and also increases the efficiency of the pranic system in the subtle body so that is the deeper effect of pranayama so why I'm telling you all this is that when you do pranayama don't just do it with a view that something is going to physically help you that also happens but there's a deeper effect and that is why pranayama also has a lot of effect on the mind and calming the mind down and making you into a calmer person and all that you know these 
these are all the side effects of practicing pranayama for a long time okay so that much about pranayama of course this is not a complete uh, exposure to pranayama there are so many pranayamas uh, if you want to learn more you can explore on your own or you can contact me and i can tell you about pranayamas more but i am going to teach just two pranayamas to take to address the current situation which is a respiratory issue and for respiratory issues we need to increase the lung capacity capacity and also help our help improve our immune system these two things are very primary for fighting this disease if we ever get it god forbid so i'm going to start with the first one which is a deep breathing technique see when you pay attention to your breath you start breathing deeply already most of the time we don't even notice our breath and therefore the breaths are very shallow and just plain getting oxygen into your blood is a very healthy thing to do so the first one we are going to do is we are going to learn what is called ujjayi pranayama ujjayi literally means victorious and it is a victorious breath is because it gets victory over a lot of your diseases and it is one of the one of the most famous pranayamas uh, in yogic uh, literature ujjayi breathing is some people also call it darth vader breath <laughs> because it sounds like darth vader speaking it's a hissing sound that you produce by constricting your throat and i will just demonstrate this first and after that i will explain how you do this okay so just listen to the sound Okay, I hope you could hear that sound. Now, this sound, I like to compare this with a balloon. So, if you if you take a balloon in which air is filled, and then you hold the tip of it and allow the air to come out slowly, it makes a hissing sound. So that's exactly what we are doing here. We are constricting the throat so that it's a narrow opening, so the air doesn't come out all of a sudden. It comes out with a hissing sound. Okay. and we make this sound when we make a sighing sound for example this is ujjayi breathing except what it is being done with the mouth open can you do that with the mouth closed and one way to practice it is this you start breathing with your mouth making the hissing sound and then close the mouth in the middle of it and continue with the nose like this i'm exhaling now and the same thing for inhalation inhalation is so and then if you if you learn to do this with your mouth always closed then you basically learn to do ujjayi pranayama Now two things about ujjayi pranayama right away you'll notice is it helps to elongate your breath to a very long breath which itself helps to increase the oxygenation and there is something about a long breath that is very peaceful 
and the sound inside your head this hissing sound has a calming effect it calms all your nerves and your mind so ujjayi pranayama is a beautiful pranayama to practice for relaxation and for pre meditation before doing meditation and even to get good sleep in the night okay now to this i want to add an additional uh, support which is with the hand so when you keep your hand on your abdomen and you are aware of the breath then you take even deeper breaths so when we combine ujjayi we put uh, your right hand on the abdomen or left hand on the chest and we are going to follow the abdomen when we inhale the abdomen will come out and we follow it with the and we try to sort of make it go a little more and also when we exhale we let the abdomen go inside and lightly push it with the hand so that we throw out more of the impure air now this is very critical for the lungs because when we practice this for some time the lung starts developing more surface area because it expands more and it's like an exercise for the lungs the lung starts developing more absorptive power which is very critical for respiratory diseases so practicing this will and also when you increase the amount of oxygen inside your overall health also improves drastically which is why the immune system also improves okay so now we are going to practice this about 10 times Ten of these breaths, Ujjayi breathing. Push your abdomen lightly inside, and throw out all the air. Pull your abdomen inside a little bit. Notice how long the breath becomes.
just fold your hand near the ankles and just relax for a few seconds. Just be with your normal breath. Some people may experience what we call hyperventilation after doing Ujjayi because there is too much oxygen now in the blood. But that's okay. Just relax into it for a few seconds. It will all go away. Okay. I hope you like that breath. One thing I forgot to mention is when you inhale uh, in this exercise, hold the breath for a few seconds before you exhale, uh, giving the lungs the chance to absorb the oxygen. So hold it. Okay. Now I'll move on to the next pranayama. It is called Bhastrika Pranayama. Bhastrika in Sanskrit means bellows. Bellows are uh, a contraption used by goldsmiths in ancient days. Uh, in which what they do is they have this big contraption in which they pump the air into the fire to melt the gold. So it, it's like a blowing the air so that the fire becomes white hot. So the bellows makes this sound like this breath and that's why it's called Bhastrika Pranayama. Bhastrika is a beautiful rejuvenating pranayama and it's a, it's a little strenuous, maybe a little strenuous for some people so you do it to your capacity. Here I'm going to teach five cycles of this. Uh, five times, that means 25 breaths. If a person feels okay, they can do 50 of them also, okay? But it's not necessary to go beyond 50 in on a particular day, morning or evening. You don't have to overdo it. So Bhastrika is done like this. You make a fist here next to your body and you're going to inhale powerful inhalation and take the arms up and open the fingers out above your head, okay? And really stretch up. And you exhale in the same powerful manner through the nose only. Now don't use the mouth at all for this. And bring it down with a powerful for, uh, force. Five. We'll do four more like this of uh, five times each. And we pause in between. Take a few normal breaths. A second round. Third round. Fourth round. fifth round. And now 
just fold your hands near the ankles and relax. You may find more hyperventilation here and you may feel a little dizzy. Don't worry about it. It's all normal. Your body is adjusting to the excess oxygen. Just relax. Okay. I hope you like that pranayama. As I said, you be the judge of the intensity to which you do it. If you are happy with only five of them, do five and then slowly graduate over time with practice because everybody is different and you have to be the judge of this. So if you don't feel comfortable, don't do too much of it. Okay, you be the judge. Now, I just want to mention as a closing note that it's important to practice uh, yogic postures as well. They have enormous benefits. So yoga is a system to be practiced. It's not picking one thing or the other. There are eight limbs in yoga and you should practice all the limbs. Um, I have uh, written articles about Ashtang Yoga in Wellness Universe. You can find it. Uh, and there's a video there in which I have described the system of Ashtang Yoga also. You can watch that also. Okay. But I wish you can start a full-fledged practice of yoga for yourself, for good health and immunity against diseases and general happiness. Okay? And now, after this uh, will come the chakra meditation. And hope you enjoy that also. Okay? Thank you very much. Namaste.